So we made a simple light meter here by just taking a photo cell and connecting it to a resistance meter, a multimeter. So we have a photo detector and what we did last time, same as last time, we took our photo detector and we made it and we connected it to a multimeter and allow so that we could take measurements of the amount of light. So we have two wires here to the multimeter. This allows us to measure the quantity of light as a change in resistance. And then we can now plug this into the multimeter off the test leads that were on there originally or we can attach the same test leads but in this case we simply take out the test leads and put in this multimeter and now we have a measure a way of measuring light right now 110 ohms if I point it up at the light if I point it a little bit not straight at the light it's bit more resistance like 530 ohms. So now last time we had a light bulb and we covered up half the light bulb to get this comparometric. This multimeter is a this light meter is is a, is, an, is a device under test so we've built a device under test so we're not considering this to be a measuring instrument this is part of the device under test. So this whole thing is the device under test. And so this device uh, measures light and we can walk around with it and bring it in closer to the light and as we come closer the resistance goes down and until we come right up close to the light now it's like 20 ohms or 24 ohms 36 ohms you know it's varying around fairly low resistances when it's in close to the light and as we come further from the light we we'll pick up other source, light sources in the room of course but generally the resistance increases and we want to measure the, we want to understand this measuring instrument. This whole thing is a measuring instrument and uh, th that we want to calibrate without using any other measuring instruments. So this is part of the device under test, but apart from that we're not using any other measurement instruments and we're comparometric equations is useful to understand things that e are either difficult to measure or inconvenient to measure or it provides a unique way of understanding things. So we took the light bulb last time, we covered it half up and opened it up. Now another approach uh, would be to use two light bulbs. If we took two identical light bulbs and we screwed them into something like this uh, that has multiple light bulbs and put them like this uh, so that they were uh, uh, pre presented to the photo detector, we could uh, take the resistance with both light bulbs running and then unscrew one of the light bulbs and take the resistance with just a single light bulb running. So if we were to, to look at that, look at a comparison of resistance with one light bulb running against resistance with two light bulbs running, we would be able to see, you know, make a comparometric relationship 
formulate a comparometric relationship. There's a light bulb. We have to find two that are the same. So the problem is these are slightly different. That one's a little bigger, and so we're looking for two identical light bulbs. I have some new bulbs here. This one's here. We could take two of these light bulbs and compare them. And if they're the same, we can use one bulb versus two bulbs, and that's simple enough that would allow us to easily understand the relationship between the bulbs because we have one unit of light and two units of light. And in fact, two bulbs that are quite identical. And and these are a little brighter also, which is kind of nice. And then what we would do is position this a certain distance from the photo cell there, and then check the resistance reading, and then see it's like 90 ohms, and then we would unscrew one of the bulbs, so there's only one, and then we move it closer until it reads the same 90 ohms, and it gets about there, um, roughly in about this position here, it's about there, and then we screw in the second bulb, and then we went from 90 ohms to 68 ohms. So we do the same pattern there and go through the same experience pattern. But now um, what is interesting is that, see I have six lamp holders in this circle. And what I can now do is I can put six lights in a circle. It's actually got seven lamp holders, but I would not use the middle one because the middle one's not the same distance from the other two, from the others. So, if we were to look at this, there's a circle, circular thing here. There's six uh, light bulbs here, and then one in the middle. And I would not use the middle one, because it's not equally spaced. But the others are all uniformly spaced. You see, if you, they're radially symmetric to the photo detector, so they'll produce equal contributions to the photo detector. So if I wanted to, I could put six bulbs in there and loosen any number of them. I could have one bulb on, two bulbs on, three, four, five, or six. And the smallest increment, the smallest ratio, comparametrically, I could get would be five versus six. That's the smallest increment. So if I have five lamps on, that's five Q, and I go to six Q, that's a 20% increase. So that's... Uh, increment times uh, uh, multiplication time of, of, of 1.2 times. So that is a very small increment. And what we'll see when we look at differential equations in terms of comparometric equations in terms of differential equations is that desire to get this sort of small amount. So we want to go from 1 to 1 plus some small amount epsilon. And in fact if we could get that amount even smaller that would be even better. So um, what I've got here is we prepared a ring of LEDs. There's 42 LEDs on this ring, and they're in groups of three. They're connected in series in groups of three. And so uh, each group of three LEDs in series forms the next uh, increment, so you can only address them in, in groups of three. So what we are going to do here is turn on all of them, and then turn them all on except three of them. So this is uh, 42 lights in groups of three, so that's 14 lights in each group of three, so there's 13 lights if we turn off one group of three, so we'll have 13 over 14. So we'll have an even smaller increment of, of uh, 13 fourteenths. So we're going to go from 13Q to 14Q. And so that's a very small increment, and that will allow us to unroll that comparometric relationship to 
to an even finer degree. So if you have some comparometric relationship here, and we're trying to explore it or understand it, we're coming along, going up, and you take that much, come around, that much, go up, take this much, come around, go that much, and go up, and so on. If we can do that in a smaller increment, we're able to take this in a much smaller piece, and we can get much finer increments of that uh, solving numerical solution of the comparometric equation. So this is how we how we do this is we take in this case we've got our our light meter here and what we're going to do is we're going to power up this lamp here and power up 13 of the lights and measure how much light there is and then power up 14 and then move it uh, towards the light. So we'll start at some distance from the light, like say over here at this end of the table. And then we're going to move closer. What I'll do again as I did before is I'll turn off the light sources in the room, starting with this television here. And turn off the TV and I'm going to turn off this light as well and I'm going to turn off that light and then I'll turn off this light over here and I'm going to turn off my workbench light and I will also grab this power supply from my workbench before I turn off the light because what I'll do is I'll use this power supply to run that light over there and so I'm going to run that set of LEDs over here with an adjustable power supply. It runs nominally on 12 volts, but this way I can adjust it and increase or decrease the amount of power there. So now I've got this power supply here hooked up uh, to the lights and I've got a switch on the floor that I can step on to engage the, so I got the extra three lights there that I can control. So this is the extra wire to ground. When you ground that middle wire, so the black wire is ground and the red wire is plus 12, which I got set to eight, which is a little low, but I can turn it up if we need to. And then this wire, when you ground it, when you ground the purple wire, it adds the extra lights on. So what we have here now, you can see, if I look at that light there, if I step down on it, the ring will be complete. So when I step down on the switch, it'll complete the ring. So now I can turn off my lights on my workbench now, and then I'll be able to see, still be able to see here, and I'm going to turn off the lights in the other room. So now what I'll be able to do close this door here and I'm just gonna close the door here. Shut off this TV here. Shut off this TV. And now most of the light's coming from this source. So now if I, if I step down on that light, you can see the, the ring completes itself. So now that's just for example, we're looking at, at 34.8 ohms. And when I step down on it, it goes to looking at it's 340.8 ohms and when I step down on it it's 325.2 ohms so you can see the change in resistance when I step down on it now what I'll do is I'll write down some numbers here so I'm going to start by putting it back here and what I see right here 
it here. Okay, so now I have this light here and we have a meter here and you can see it's 293.2 ohms and when I step on this switch here to turn on that other light over there turn on the additional light you can see when I step that additional light on it goes from 293.2 ohms down to 280.6 ohms so I'm going to write 293, 293.6 and when I step down the resistance will drop. So I'm going to step down on the switch is 280.8 280.8 when I step down and when I step up it goes back up to 280.8 so it's 280.8 and so now when I so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to slide this closer until I get it down to 280.8 I'm just sliding it along the table until it gets to 280.8. I'll go back and forth until I get 280.8. There it is, <clears throat> 280.8. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to step down again. And when I step down, it goes, the ring completes, all the lights are on now. And when all the lights are on, it's 268.4. Let me write 268.4 here. So this is, <clears throat> each of these corresponds to moving it along. And then I want to get it, now that I'm not stepping down, I want to get it to 268.4. This is like solving a differential equation with a small epsilon. 268.4. So now that's where it's 268.4. I'm just writing this on. It doesn't matter where that is anyway because we're not going to, we don't need to measure it or anything. We just, we're going to try to do this without measuring anything. So now when I step down, 268.4, when I step down, goes to 256.7 256.7 and now we're going to slide it down until it gets to 256.7 256.7 and then again that's like right here that was 256.7 and we're going to step down again we're going to see what we get and when we step down it drops to 240 245.3 245.3. Now, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to move it until we get to 245.3 and closer until I get to 245.3. And then I'm going to step down. Now it says 234.5. 234.5. Two, 
234.5 ohms, 234.5 ohms. Now I'm going to move it now 234. Now we've got to move this in closer till it gets to 234.5 ohms. Thirty-four point five ohms, and then step down. Two hundred and twenty-four point seven, two or two hundred point one, two hundred and twenty-four point one. So it's two hundred and twenty-four point one. Closer until it gets to 224.1. There it is, 224.1. I'll step down, now it's 214.2. 214.2. Closer till it gets to 214.2. And then now we'll step down again. Now it's 204.7. Okay, now again we'll move it till it's 204.7 and now we're going to step down 195.6 and move it close till I get to 195.6 Now, any range, Let's see what range we want. Eighty-seven is what we want to move it closer until we get to one eighty-seven. One eighty-seven. We'll step down. Now it's one seventy-eight point seven. Step down. It's one seventy point seven. I 
and <coughs> we'll move it till it's 170.7. Step down. One sixty two and a half. And then we'll move it till it gets 162.5. Closer till it gets to one fifty five and a half. And then get one forty eight point eight. One forty eight point eight. Now we're going to go from 155 and a half down to 148.8. There we go. And then we're going to step down. Takes us to 142.2. One forty two point two, and then we're going to go to one forty two point two. We're going to take it down to one forty two point two. Step it one thirty six. Down to 136. And then we come back here, slide it forward to 136. And then we're going to step down on it 130.2. down to 130.2 and then step down on it it's 124.6 Same thing, we're going to move it closer till it gets to 124.6. And then we're going to step down on it, 119.2. Uh, 
I'm going to slide it closer till it gets to 119.2. I'm going to step down on it. 114.2. Closer, 114.2. Step down to 109.3, 109.3. And then move it till it gets to 109.3. And then step down on it. 104.5, 104 and a half. Okay, moving into 104 and a half. Step down on it. 99.9, I wonder if I should change the range. Move it to the 109 mark. 109.9. There you go. Step down. Get 95.7. And move this to 95.7. Sit down on it. 91.6. I'm just going to push this down to the 91.6 mark. Step down on it, 87.8. And kind of step down on it, 84.2. And closer to get 84.2. Step 80.8. Down seventy seven point one. Now do the seventy seven point one on here. Step on it. Seventy four. Now, slide into the 74. Okay. 
good. Step on it. 71. So this is just a list. I don't care where the light is. I don't care about the location of the light. I just want this list. 68.2. Is there any range this improvement? Fifty-eight, sixty point three. We're going to go down to fifty-eight, and then step on it. Fifty-five point seven. And then we're going to slide it down to fifty-five point seven. Step on it. It's fifty one point three.
move it. There it is. Fifty-one point three. Step on it. It brings it to forty-nine point two. Forty-five point five. Forty-five and a half. So by now we're pretty close to that light source. So we're probably close enough. We might get some inaccuracies eventually if we get too close, but I think that's a pretty good spacing. 